Possibly, and it's not in a so far future, we may have a clear evidence that there are life on some of this planet. So far, it's quite amazing that we are on one of the systems that looks pretty much different from all the planets that we have found. So is it the reason why they are life? Because we are different? Or it's just a matter of luck here? And I think this kind of question we should be able to answer. So, Pete, we've been really lucky on the show because we've had some pretty incredible guests, right? Yeah. I mean, just uh, top of my mind, we can can count Bill Nye a couple times. Bill Nye, the science guy. Friend of the show, Michio Kaku. Yes. A couple times. Science communicator, uh, El- Emily Calandrelli was yes. a fun one. Uh, we had Dr. Ronke Olabizi, who taught us uh, better how uh, to live in space. Yes, which um, is, you know, kind of where we're going to end up today. We're not living in space, but we will be talking about space. But... We have not had a Nobel Prize winner, have we? Are we having one today? We are, Pete. Oh, and this is good. It's it's really Exciting. cool for this show because, oh, I mean, A, it's really cool to have somebody that's obviously accomplished something like that. But, you know, we've discussed exoplanets on the show, what, five times, ten Probably, times? Yeah. like because it's, times. it's such a big part of where we're at, but where we're going in terms of cosmological research. It's a great what if, right? It's Everyone's a great what Everyone's thinking if. about, you know, where are we, if this... Everyone assumes the planet is going to self-destruct at some point. We're all going to have to go somewhere. <laughs> yes. So the, the the fun what if is to like think about how we're going to go somewhere and maybe get to an exoplanet. It's a, it's a new era, the, the new frontiers, as they used to say in Star Trek. But, you know, not long ago, we've discussed that number. People generally say over 4,000 exoplanets. But 25 years ago, there were none. We had not yeah. discovered any exoplanets except our guest today and his team. We're the people that in 1995 were the discoverers of that very first exoplanet that's created this entire new era of cosmological astronomical research that's not just exciting people in the field, it's exciting everybody in the world because mm-hmm. it, it does feel like we're sort of going into that next frontier of human exploration. It's wildly exciting yeah. and we're super mm-hmm. honored to have uh, Nobel Prize winning astronomer Didier Kello join us today on What If Discussed. Professor, how are you? Welcome to What Welcome. If Discussed. I'm fine. Thank you for the invitation. It's great to have you. And again, as, as Peter and I were talking about, exoplanets have been a big part of many conversations we've had on this show. Before we get into the, sort of the big what ifs, uh, we're all sort of excited to hear about your excitement that day, that fateful day, I mean, it's it's hard to even put it into words what it would be like making a discovery like that. Take us back to that day, that moment, so, and what that was like. Well, I think we were not expecting to find a planet like that. So it came up really at a big surprise. It was not part of my program to detect this. So I really believe that was anything else but the planet first when I saw the data. But after battling with the data, I came up with this very bizarre conclusion, there must be a planet like Jupiter with a very short orbit. And at that time, it was absolutely a crazy statement. My PhD advisor didn't believe you right away. He had, it took him some month to really realize that I was right. And I think it took clearly a couple of years for the community to really swallow this baby. It was really uh, difficult to believe that. The very reason is the planet was like Jupiter, but was orbiting the star way closer than the orbit of Mercury. It was really a roasted Jupiter. That's why we call them a hot Jupiter. And this kind of planet doesn't exist in the solar system. And they even not predicted by the theory. It's even worse than that. The predicted the theory tell you it must not exist. So the first planet to be found orbiting another star was indeed a planet that should have never existed but they are plenty. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I'm guessing there's a range of criteria too, and that, that not all exoplanets are the same. So what, what are the key attributes to becoming uh, an exoplanet or to qualify as one? Well, I think we, we started to find the most obvious one with the technique we had, which is looking for variability in the velocity of the stars. You can also pick planet, uh, if the planet goes right in front of the star, which is called transits, um, no, uh, essentially, what is a planet is is something orbiting a star, which 
is of the mass of a planet like we know. So if you have anything like a Jupiter or a Neptune of Earth orbiting a star, well, it qualifies as a planet. And you really understand uh, that this object must have formed somewhat from a structure that we call a protoplanetary disk. And the origin of the formation of this planet into the disk should tell you something about the nature of the planet and the chemistry of the planet and the possible atmosphere you may have on these planets. Yeah, wildly exciting stuff. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back more with Professor Kello on the other side. You are watching and listening to What If Discussed. Richard, let's talk about healthy eating kits. Let's. Okay. Well, I've been uh, hearing a lot about Green Chef recently, and I think it might be the best one out there. Green Chef is the first USDA certified organic meal company. They make eating well, easy and affordable with plans to fit every lifestyle. So whether you're keto or paleo, vegan, vegetarian, some people are just looking to eat healthier. Well, they've got recipes to suit uh, any diet or preference. Well, and that's the key right now. Obviously, we know sort of these food delivery services have blown up, but we don't want to sort of start eating unhealthy and everybody getting off their, whether it's paleo, whether it's keto, the fact that you can now get that delivered, you know, quality, but also the ability to make it easier. Uh, you know, I think it's, it, it goes without saying it's huge. Yeah, I think it's going to stick around too. I think it's uh, really important. And, and if you're thinking it's just a big green box of organic vegetables. <laughs> Which nobody wants. Nobody, well, some people want that and that's that's fine. But this is actually meal kits. So Which is what I want. Yes. Ingredients come pre-measured, mostly prepped so you'll spend less time stressing more time enjoying delicious home-cooked meals plus they offer 100 percent offset of their direct carbon emissions and their plastic packaging so you can feel good about what you're getting and how it got to your table to sign up go to greenchef.com slash what if 90 and use the code what if 90 to get 90 dollars off 90 bucks off yeah plus free shipping yeah, so that's greenchef.com slash whatif90. Use the code whatif90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. Or free shipping. Or green chefing. <laughs> green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. So, Professor, it's been 25 years since you and your team made that discovery. Obviously, we know technology changes at a crazy exponential rate pretty much year to year these days. I, we hear about things like the dynamite model. We hear other sort of new introductions to this search for other planets. What is some of the technology and new science that exists in the field of discovering new exoplanets? Well, we have improved quite a lot um, the tools that we were using at that time to detect planet. Well, first, the machine that measured the radial velocity or the speed of the star, the, the accuracy or the precision we get with the measurements has increased by a factor 100 because we have been using plenty of new techniques, optics, component. Now, we have been flying satellites that have been pretty efficient about finding planet. One of the famous one is Kepler, the Kepler missions. Right now, there is a test satellite and the Keops satellite flying and sooner there will be the Plato satellite. So all this is a new development that help us to find smaller planet or planet on different kind of star. But the big change is coming with the new generations of very large telescopes. So we, and say the community, the astrophysical community in the world, are building the next generations of telescopes. The size of the mirror of this telescope will range from 30 meter to 40 meter diameter, which are really huge. It's a massive progress. It's a complete new kind of technology. And with this machine, we will be able to make picture of some of this planet. And talking about space, in less than a year, we will be flying the next space telescope, which is a James Webb Space Telescope. And with this telescope, we are going to measure atmosphere of some of these transiting planets that we have found, especially the small ones, for which we will have a lot of questions to ask, because we have little idea all this uh, what we call super-Earth planet or really have been formed and what they look like. And we will have a lot of surprises and good ones, I can tell you. 
Wow. Just, uh, just so you know, Didier, the, the 30 meter, uh, mirror is what Richard uses to get ready <laughs> yes, every morning. Exactly. That's what it, <laughs> it requires me to get ready for the show, a 30 <laughs> meter mirror. Uh, you've been on record as playing down the possibility of us, uh, one day migrating to an exoplanet. And that's probably because of the distance, but, Let's say we get in our what if time machine and Richard, if you can give me a little bit of sound effect. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we've solved the practical issue of, of getting there. So we get there. Then what? What if? Well, I think we should acknowledge that it's unlikely we'll go there anytime, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you can look at the earth without going to the earth. We have plenty of satellite that is looking at the earth. So what you can retrieve by remote looking at something is just absolutely amazing. So we will look with amazing details on this planet and we will know whether they have a surface. We will know what kind of rocks are on the surface. We don't need to go there to get an idea what it is. We will know whether there is water. It's pretty easy to detect water. It makes very strong spectral signature. We will know whether the planet rotates. We will know whether there are continents. All this will be possible remotely. And we may have evidence from the chemistry of the atmosphere that something is going on on this planet that cannot be only explained by, let's say, the geophysics of the planet, and it must be related to life. And this is the most exciting, I think, prospect that we have, that possibly, and it's not in a so far future, we may have a clear evidence that there are life on some of this planet. Or maybe there is no life on this planet. And that's really a big question. And I think this will tell us a lot about ourselves. Because so far, it's quite amazing that we are on one of the systems that looks pretty much different from all the planet that we have found. So is it the reason why they are life? Because we are different? Or it's just a matter of luck here? And I think this kind of question we should be able to answer. I mean, it's it's hard to overstate how wildly exciting these times are. And, you know, what when you look back in a thousand years on this particular time in history, it will be the beginning of an entirely new era. <laughs> Professor, honestly, that's there's so much more to talk about. You talked about the possibilities of discovering intelligent life in the universe. We haven't gotten to even talk about uh, the the fantastic Netflix series, Alien Worlds, which you are obviously a big part of, which helps us imagine what some of these exoplanets might look like if there was life there. It's so highly recommended. We want to talk about that and more on the other side of the break. Professor, can you stick around? I can. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll be back more with Professor Kello. Yeah, if you want to hear more with the uh, Nobel Prize winning astronomer DDL, Didier Kello, click on the link below and you can get the full audio podcast of the show. If you're already listening to it, well, we'll be back after the break. Um, and Professor, before we let uh, our viewers go, uh, maybe you can tell them where they can find your work online or anywhere else. Well, I think if you Google my name, you will be amazing how many movies and recording there are of my talks of my work. So just, just use the Google search machine. <laughs> yeah, a quick Google search on the old magic box. All right. So for those of you who are ready to go further into space, click that link. And if that's all the time you have for us, well, thanks for joining us on What If Discussed. <laughs> 